So welcome, guys. Uh, welcome to another topper session. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. Meihari Shankar uh, to the show. So he secured a prestigious rank of AML two in this year's uh, INISS exams. So we're going to pick his brains a bit. What was his strategies? What worked for him? And uh, what is his advice to his juniors? So we'll have a detailed look at his uh, strategies. So firstly, congrats are in order. You've got your secured your pick up your college, and uh, so all the best. And uh, so, yeah. So you have secured rank two. So what are what? So before we go to how you secured rank two, could you just introduce what uh, yourself? What which batch are you from? Where are you from? Which college did you do your MBBS and MD? Sure, sure. So I am May Hari Shankar. So I did my under graduation from Madras Medical College, sir. I belong to 2013 batch. So after completing my under graduation, I did my post graduation in PG Chandigarh. So I completed my uh, uh, post graduation in last year, uh, la June. So that's it. Uh, you did it in medicine or pediatrics? So medicine, MD General Medicine. Okay. okay. So you took one year off for your PG for your DM preparation. Ah yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, so uh, how did you approach cardiology as a subject for preparation of for the INISS? Sir, uh, cardiology. From the undergraduate days, uh, cardiology was uh, a bit a loving subject from uh, from an inner self of mine. So it naturally, I was more interested in looking at the cardiology cases which were in PGA emergencies. So we used to see a lot of uh, emergencies. So while seeing the emergencies, uh, since we were more interested in cardiology, I used to start reading with Brownwald actually. So. Whenever I got time, although it was very hectic there, uh, whenever I got time, uh, I used to start uh, uh, at least a few, one or two pages of uh, Brown Wall. So just to make sure that uh, I'm moving ahead in uh, what I like. So uh, it started like that. Uh, later, uh, I did not uh, subscribe to any platform for la a long time. I was more st uh, stuck to Brown Wall uh, until my final years. So uh, uh, towards the end of my final year, uh, just to have a brush up. So the exams were uh, a bit close. Uh, the MD exams were a bit close. So uh, then uh, I subscribed to the uh, apps. So then started uh, studying cardiology in an entrance point of view. So this was along with your MD final year preparation? Yes, sir. I started uh, uh, at almost in the sixth semester, sir. So you found time because PJ is supposed to be very hectic. So you found sir. time for reading broad, yeah. Found brown time for world. reading brown world, yeah. You finished your brown world by the time when you reached final year. Uh, uh, by actually, it was just uh, uh, one or two pages per day. I, I, we used to come very late in the night, actually. So just because uh, I was uh, more interested in that, uh, I I read a few topics here and there, and I finished. I did not finish brown world entirely, sir. That was a very far fetched dream. So I tried to complete some. Uh, 60 60 percentage of it or 70 percentage of it by final year. Uh, in fact, uh, let, let, that was uh, for more for more of an interest kind of thing that uh, I read cardiology for a long time. So I'll be it will be easy for me to practice rather than uh, for uh, INISS. I was uh, happy reading Braunwald to reciprocate it into practice. So, so you read Braunwald more for your clinical practice than rather than for your entrance point of view. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, so you have read Braun. Have you seen the marrow videos for cardiology? Yes, sir. Um, uh, since uh, at the end of my uh, fifth semester or sixth semester beginning, uh, I watched a few videos. Uh, I started watching the videos. So I completed them uh, almost in four or five months, actually. Uh, uh, once. Uh, so, it, so it was very crisp, crisp, uh, uh, crisp, crisp. Uh, content of the brown world actually so that uh, that gave me an edge in the entrance exams actually so, uh, so was your understanding you you're at brown world so was your understanding bettered by seeing those videos did you find a better conceptual understanding seeing those videos yes sir definitely yes because uh, uh, reading uh, uh, like 10 to 15 pages uh, in a, in 2 to 3 days and uh, just watching one video for an hour, I think it is equal. Both are the same. So uh, the video, when we see the video, it was very easy to grasp things. 
i was i was just reading it and uh, some of the concepts i understand it in my own way actually i didn't uh, know the exact uh, mechanism behind it or uh, why is that guidelines favoring such drug so once when i saw your videos uh, so a lot of it got cleared actually so uh, in your in your preparation how did you uh, you saw the marrow videos did you use the marrow notes sir uh, i used the marrow videos uh, so the notes i uh, used to uh, go inside the videos where the notes will be given in the sub section so i just used them sir actually Do you I find that useful because a lot of can. people yeah a lot of people see those marrow videos once and the next time they just read through the notes so did you do like that or did you yeah it was it more videos? like that sir it was more like that so i saw the yes. videos once because it is very easy in the sub section we have the notes so we can make the video run above and uh, see the, even if we have a doubt we can look at the sub section of notes so it was yeah, very think, yeah. once you've seen the videos once i think for revision i think you're reading those notes are very good because all those important points you know they have different colors also so all those different points are highlighted and uh, you can actually grasp your concepts aids into revision a lot so what uh, would have time been, stamps uh, are also very good sir the time yeah, stamps what, are... yeah exactly so a one hour video would probably be if you have read seen the videos would probably be condensed around 10 minutes by reading yeah. the notes Uh, so especially yes. if you read it multiple times it's that good so yes. did you use the uh, marrow mcqs and the marrow grantus ah uh, yes sir definitely since my preparation for was for a long time eventually i came across uh, all the aspects in marrow uh, once at least so question bank uh, i did once sir and uh, uh, revised it once before exam uh, question bank i finished uh, once and the recall videos uh, were, were more helpful for uh, the previous year questions so uh, this year's question paper was a bit tough you had a lot of questions which were you know from unexpected areas areas yes. where you don't expect an md candidate you know especially uh, there were four questions on electrophysiology you know you you are from pg you would probably have an exposure to electrophysiology but most candidates all over india you know uh, even dm candidates don't have a good uh, electrophysiology grasp but they asked you hardcore electrophysiology questions so yes. were you able to answer those sir uh, to be frank uh, i i have seen those questions uh, at least once in my preparation but uh, that is not an important topic uh, as i felt that it was not an important topic uh, during the uh, last one month of the exam so i did not went uh, i did not go and uh, recollect those so that is why i did not want to take a risk i left all the three uh, electro physiology questions which came sir so i think that's very important because you know you have a just uh, i have received messages from a lot of people you know they are like uh, there were three or four electrophysiology questions so just imagine uh, even the uh, previous interview aml rank 5 even aml rank 2 says they have left all those electrophysiology questions so elect- this is a zero sum question it means that if everyone leaves a question it doesn't really affect your rankings so you should concentrate on questions which you can answer like this time it might be electrophysiology next time they'll bowl another bouncer Yes, so definitely. it is equally important for you guys to leave the ball as it is to play the ball. So it is yes. like surviving batting in the first hour of test cricket. You have to leave the ball. So I was even uh, thinking yeah. of leaving that uh, uh, LAO view question, sir, and coronary sinus and right atrium. So I yeah, had exactly. a doubt. So just be, when you find a tough question like this, when you find so the so-called landmine questions, which I use, I always think: Are the other candidates likely to answer that question correctly? if no then you can you can rather than getting minus 1 you leave it alone because you're not going to get an edge leaving is equal, equally important so uh, it's not possible for you guys to go and sit and study electrophysiology electrophysiology is a two year course you cannot do that but uh, uh, it is leaving is also equally important so this time i said it might be electrophysiology this time next time it will be something in cat study next time it will be something in some congenital heart disease study they can ask you any questions but there are a large number of questions which are asked from regular areas areas which an md student is expected to know i think even you would agree there are a fair number Definitely. of questions are asked which are usual questions usual areas heart failure those MI. questions i think you should not get them wrong rather than answering yeah, you should not get them wrong right? exactly exactly those if you get those wrong you will be set behind so when you are preparing rather than focusing on rare questions if you focus on electrophysiology you will be spending a huge amount of time but yes. that you should be focusing more on mi more on heart failure congenital heart disease all those things so the focus yes. on primary areas 
and then if you have time focus on secondary areas so that's why i said even the two topper inter interviews i have done they, everyone has left those electrophysiology questions so i had done a, a module on how to approach mcqs i think you would have seen it ah the 80 minute yeah, module said that you should leave questions you should leave questions and it's equally important ah, yeah. yes. so how was your stage 2 preparation like uh, how was your stage 2 interview like sir stage 2 interview i felt that uh, uh, it was around for 20 minutes sir Uh, so 15 to 20 so for, minutes. Uh, those of you guys who don't know, stage two is online and uh, uh, you, they it's done over the uh, net and they ask you questions and they uh, they grade you based on that. It's not offline where you go to a something like AIMS or PJ. They have lot of spotter stations. It's purely online. So how was your stage two uh, preparation and how was your stage two experience? Actually, this is my third attempt and my second interview, sir. So I felt okay. that. Uh, uh this time uh, the interview questions uh, i think i was grilled more on uh, more in the interview rather than the mcq exam so uh, there was a series of questions uh, as we keep on answering that question went to the next level. there were five stations with five different scenarios and uh, they asked me five different scenarios and the evidence uh, based trial for each scenario like they asked for a triple vessel disease with lv dysfunction uh wh- what will you do so uh, when i told the cabg they asked me what was the trial which came recently uh how did you say cabg so i i i had to answer it as stretch trial so uh hypertriglyceridemia sorry sir stretch trial is an old trial i studied that in 2015 when i was preparing yes sir uh, so uh, then hypertriglyceridemia they asked me omega 3 fatty acids are given what is the dose of omega 3 fatty acid so what is the trial based on a reduce it trial so my track lip they asked me what is what is the difference between a coop trial and a everest trial so when i okay, so, so i, I think, think again was it possible for you to learn all these differences in the coap trial and the everest trial sir uh, no sir i they asked me first uh, wha- what is the name mm. of the uh, transcatheter h2h by mitral valve repair device i told it is mitral clip then asked me the um, wha- what are the indications uh, lb encystole diameter and pulmonary artery systolic pressure less than 70 until then i answered then they asked me what is the trial you know i told uh, coap trial and everest trial. they told uh, they, uh, it was actually the last question sir uh, Okay, in that series so it's basically because they'll keep on increasing the level until you cannot answer uh, i think so that's so. how it is yeah uh, is there any point in studying for the stage 2 sir uh, i think uh, uh, to be frank uh, uh, there is a one week gap in between that sir uh, yeah uh, uh, very fortunately i went through the stitch trial in that one week only so i i'm I'll, my, i mean i might be a bit biased so uh, just to Uh, there is no point in uh, completely studying it from the first word sir but uh, just to keep a touch of it uh, a daily revision of 3 to 4 hours uh, i think uh, will be uh, uh, will our answers will be more faster in the interview if we have at least 3 to 4 hours of uh, revision after the stage 1 results have been announced uh, okay, i know okay. but specific yes. as you mentioned specific preparation is not required sir we cannot uh, usually uh, predict for the last yeah usually for the last 3 years i have the same powerpoint for stage 2 and i say the same things actually i say that they ask random questions you cannot predict those questions yes. and uh, they will keep on asking you questions till you cannot answer and that's how for the last 3 years it is you know people get tense that they'll study they'll study cat study they'll study x rays ecgs uh-huh. and the point is you will get 10 to 20 minutes in some cases if the number of candidates were more they ask they give you 5 minutes and yes. in that 5 minutes you know you cannot uh, they can ask you any random question under the sun so usually yes. that's what i say that you know uh, you you've done the hard part by if you have if you have gone uh, to stage 2 and uh, i think it's better to go in with a calm mind rather than you know getting confused and um, uh, and that then it. that will result in more harm than good yes, so uh, so you're from pgi so uh, are you going to take pgi or you have any particular college in mind sir pj sir pj chandigarh so yes. i think uh, i think it's it's one is one is an excellent college for doing dm cardiology and two i think uh, you already have the experience you have i think in pj you have uh, extensive clinical postings you are posted yes, there and you have to really work definitely and many of your seniors actually are maro students in fact i have actually done their interviews also you can have a, yes. you can have a look at it also i have already yes. done uh, done their interview Yes, so sir. do you you have seen all the recall questions so do you feel that the standard of the question paper is going up remaining the same or coming down sir uh, last three sessions i have given it is it is a steady rise sir actually yeah, the first session it was very so much easier I, Sec- yeah yes. 
I'm doing recall from 2021, and I find that the standard of the paper keeps on going up, up, up. Now, if you see the first uh, say paper uh, recall in 2021, I think it was pretty straightforward, simple questions. And then as of right now, it's the level keeps on going up. And in fact, when I'm I'm reshooting those videos, so you'd have all the updates. The video length is also increasing. So what was previously one hour 15 minutes becomes one hour 30 minutes or one hour 35 minutes. So every video is like around 10 to 15 percent more because uh, one the updates are becoming more and more. For example, if you take the hypertension guidelines, they're becoming even bigger. And two, with even with experience, we have also gained experience. Uh, seeing and answering the questions which uh, the examiners ask. We find that these are the areas which they are likely to focus. And so even the videos will get longer. So hopefully it doesn't get too long and get too boring. So what was your experience with the entire Marrow uh, app, the Marrow faculty and all those? What was your experience? It was really good, sir, actually. So being more interested in cardiology, uh, sir, I felt it like rather than preparing for INSS, we used to discuss ECGs among our batchmates. We used to discuss ECOs among our batchmates or case scenarios relating to cardiology among our batchmates. So uh, after reading Braunwald, uh, if the things which I, I was more hesitant, hesitant, like the concepts which was, uh, in which I was more hesitant, it got cleared after re seeing those videos by you, actually. It was very crisp that it was a time saving. So uh, the concepts got cleared uh, rather than uh, the Braunwald had everything, but uh, I not to grasp everything. everything. Yeah. Say, as I say, you know, Braunwald is a textbook meant for cardiology exit, not for cardiology entry. But unfortunately, I realized it, realize it bit late, sir. See, uh, you guys had marrow at least, but uh, when in our time, I had to read Braunwald. I didn't understand anything in Braunwald. I, I, we used to sit and mug up entire Braunwald and go and write exams. The conceptual knowledge, the wealth of uh, experience you guys have was not available to my generation or Akesha's generation. Just like that. So you guys are really lucky because you can actually see a case. Suppose you see a case of, say, GBS or Miller Fisher. You can actually go back and read or see a super specialist teaching you. So yeah. uh, that is a real experience because, you know, not every time you can go and ask your neurology consultant to tell you about uh, GBS. It's not possible. So this is something, uh, a real experience for you. And I think yeah. all of you guys who are doing pursuing MD all over the country, I think you should uh, uh, try to make use of this uh, valuable resource. Yes. So uh, anyway, Dr. May Shankar, uh, thank you. And uh, thank you know, you're part of the cardiology fraternity. So hopefully yes. that we'll meet somewhere in some conference uh, or yeah. in somewhere in India. You know, even uh, we have this all over India conferences. So somewhere I think we'll meet. So yes. thank you, Dr. May Shankar, and you know all the best for a wonderful career. You're in a very fascinating subject. You're in a very rapidly developing subject, and you're going to study in one of the best institutes in the country. So all the best, Dr. May Shankar, and thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you for the interview. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much, sir.